He is the most decorated player in the history of the Adelaide Football Club. A young man from the Riverland who became the heart and soul of his club. He's a Premiership player, the first Crow to win a Brownlow, the second Crow to reach 300 games. Welcome, Mark Rusciuto. Thanks, Mike. Andrew McLeod might have a little bit to say about that. Uh, so, nice no, I'm happy with that. As you good reckon? as uh, Macca was. No, I think you, uh, that's your mantle. Okay. Yeah, until someone oh. gets you. Someone will get you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, your list of achievements is a mile long. Yeah. I suspect that the Premiership stands on a plane of its own. Yeah. Which of the personal achievements gives you the most pride? Oh, look, I'd be uh, lying if I didn't say the Brownlow. I and mean, that was um, something that, uh, as a kid growing up, you always dreamed about, you know, winning a Brownlow or, or playing AFL and you never think you're ever going to win it and uh, really didn't sit that comfortably with me for quite a while. I was, uh, you know, when you get introduced as a Brownlow medalist, um, it doesn't feel right, but, um, uh, you yeah, know, it was a great night and... Uh, uh, we'll get back to that. I'm going to yeah. get back to the Brownlow. <laughs> I, I must say, as an observer, I, I think it's the fact that you played 300 games of AFL football in 13 years and 80 odd days just staggers me. Yeah. I, I mean, just a proof of your talent and your resilience, and I, I, I think that's incredible. That's an average of 23 games a season. Yeah, well, I probably had a fair bit of luck with injury. I mean, my body was a durable body. Um, only had the one uh, real mishap in, in '97, but apart from that. Um, yeah, I could, uh, I guess, take a bit of punishment and, and got through, uh, be able to play with injuries quite well. So, um, um, yeah, no, it was uh, very lucky. Now, 97, you talked about 97, that was Adelaide's first premiership year and you missed the grand final that yep. year because of groin problem, didn't yep. you? That must have cut deeper. You were young, uh, just such an historic year for the footy club and you missed it. Yeah, that was as hard as uh, I'd ever, uh, anything I'd had to deal with at the time. I mean, I uh, very focused on team performance and uh, um, come from a background of winning premierships at Wakery and uh, you know when you build up and uh, and you miss your chance of, of winning a flag it, it cuts deeper than um, anything can and uh, um, you know I started getting issues halfway through the year with that and it just gradually got worse and worse and worse to the point where I tried to miss uh, a game in I think it was round 21 or 22 and uh, was just hoping my groins would get better, but uh, one day I couldn't get off the lounge room floor and I thought I'd better get an operation. So how difficult is it watching your team sort of <laughs> on the way to such a monumental occasion? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, do you feel cheated is it, or is it, are you just happy that the, that the boys are going to have a great moment? One minute you're happy, mm. next minute you're crying. And, um, yeah, look, you, you don't feel part of it at all and you can ask anyone who's been involved in it, you know, you just don't feel part of it unless you play. And, uh, you know, at the celebrations that night, I went home early and uh, I was pretty annoyed for the whole summer, really. Mm. I mean, it wasn't just me, there was Tony Modra, as you said, there was Peter Vardy, there was Matthew Liptak, Simon Jagenza, there was, there was quite a few other players that missed out that year and I think that was one of the driving forces of helping us win it in 98. Mm -hmm. Eight All-Australian jumpers, fantastic achievement, the first of them at 19. Did you earn every one of them? I've got a suspicion that in 2002 <laughs> that your mate Neil Curley, who used to sit on the All-Australian yeah. Selection Committee, he might have got you over the line because, <clears throat> just to prove that I do some homework yep. for these things, Mark, yep. you finished 12th in the Adelaide Best and Ferris that year. 10th or 12th, yeah, I don't know. Was it 12th, was it? Uh, well, the AFL media guide hasn't got you in the top 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look... Um yeah, maybe I did. Um, I guess you win, get some things you don't deserve and you miss out on others you should, but uh, what were my stats? Can you remember? Well, I you? know you kicked 35 goals and you know you kicked 35 <laughs> goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, blokes are their own hardest judges, but I suppose yeah. in this context, I, look... I'm no, not, I was surprised. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm happy to say that, but... Mm. Uh, um, I'll take the other sevens, that are all right? It's only nitpicking, mate. <laughs> I just wanted to show that I do some work on this. Now, you're an amiable guy, this is, and, and everyone seems to love you, but you didn't mind up ending blokes on the footy field, did you? I think that's part of footy. I think that's what everyone loves about footy, yeah. the contact side of things. So, um, yeah, if the opportunity presented itself. Did the opportunity present itself one day when uh, Dean Kemp was in your sights? Jamison on hands and knees, gives it across to Cousins, to Kemp, bang, down he goes from the shooter! He was almost out before, as soon as you hit him and he landed like a log and, and, mm. uh, and we know post his football career he's had problems with concussion and the, the effects of head knocks. Yep. Was that as heavy as you've ever hit anyone? Uh, if it wasn't it was close. Mm. Yeah, he just The way it happened I didn't line him up from any more than, you know, I don't know, he took a couple of steps I yeah. think and um, sort of got him flush and in those days it didn't even give a free kick away so I didn't get reported or anything. And uh, You get reported today? 
Oh, you get you definitely get four to six weeks. These four to days. six, yeah. Probably, yeah. Well, you're not allowed to hit in the head. No. And um, my shoulder did hit him in the head. When those things, this, excuse this, this is my layman's question. Right? Yep. When, I know it's a tough arena and all that sort of stuff, but when those things happen and the consequences can be dramatic, as they've yep. been in that case, do you ever seek, would you bother to have called him, or, or if you've seen him, do you ever talk about that? I've never seen him. Um, no. But, um, you know, on the footy field, you hurt people as hard as you can. That's mm. the way it was played. But, um, you know, I wasn't aware for a while afterwards that he had any long-lasting yeah, effects. Sure. And I don't yeah. think it would have been just from my bump if it no, did. No, I, but, no, no, but, true. Um, you know, look, I'm, I don't like people suffering uh, long-term effects from any, from mm. in, in any sort of uh, part of life. But yeah. um, if I knew I had an influence on it, I'd definitely... No, do. I don't mean... I, I, it's, it sounds naive for me on that yeah. issue, but I'm just really conscious of the, the impact of continual knocks yep. to the head for these blokes and I think we're seeing the consequences of that now a bit. Well I think if you looked at my med medical file you'd see that I've had quite a few concussions as well. So <laughs> okay, okay we're like. square. <laughs> now you're extremely busy in retirement. Yep. You're a Fox footy commentator, you've got a daily role on Triple M in Adelaide. Yep. You're a father of four. Yep. You own pubs dotted around South Australia. Well three pubs. <laughs> That's got it. <laughs> uh, you're a keen fisherman and you like the punt. Uh, is coaching, does that ever figure in your considerations about what you might do down the track? Uh, look, I uh, always thought I was going to go into coaching, especially early in my career. Um, towards the end of my career, I was pretty tired mentally and, and physically. It was a pretty uh, taxing footy career. And um, I had to set myself up in the... Uh, uh, in the pub game from um, sort of early 2000s, so uh, I was pretty entrenched in it. I had most of the money I'd made out of footy in pubs, and um, you know I, I wasn't really in a position to either sell the pubs or, at the end of my career, to go into coaching. So if 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 I wasn't in pubs, I probably would have. You've always been business oriented, haven't you? I mean, I, I, reading your book Rue, which came out yep. in 2007, you bought a house at 19 years of the year you turned 19, you owned a house. Yeah, well, I started playing when I was 17, yeah. so the advice I got, you know, buy a house and try and pay that off. So I think it was pretty good advice. And, uh, look, I grew up on a fruit property where it was pretty hard to make money, so uh, the last thing I wanted to do was, um, you know, not capitalise on um, the position I was in with footy. Does your Italian background influence your thinking about that? I mean, your parents came out uh, yep. from, from Italy. Oh, Dad's parents Dad's came parents out from, from Italy, Italy yeah. yeah. and sort of and made their way in the Riverland yep. and sort of earned every zack yep. that they could. yep. You're more conscious of that money's difficult to come by and, and you yeah, need to look absolutely. after it? Yeah, absolutely. I've seen a lot of people struggle for a long time up in the Riverland and uh, that's the last thing I wanted to do. So uh, I was always very conscious of um, making sure that uh, I did the right thing with the money so that uh, our family didn't have to go through the same things that a lot of people mm. are up there at the moment. Tell us about uh, life growing up. You were playing, uh, you obviously loved your lifestyle yeah. in the Riverland area yeah. and you were playing with the men in, at, at Wakery at 15 yeah. years of age. Yeah, that was a good experience. I mean, I just, Waker is like any other country town, absolutely mad keen on their footy and sport. And uh, growing up on the river, um, you know, river sports as well and fishing and all that. But playing footy was a sensation. My dad coached the under 10s, played all the underage stuff. And then, uh, yeah, the opportunity came to play A grade footy at Waker and, and played a year at 15. And then, uh, got picked up to, to go and play in Adelaide after that. And Do you remember the day that uh, Curls, Neil Curley, uh, went down yeah. to Wakery to watch you play? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've told that story a hundred times. Oh, but sorry, it's, forget no, that one. <laughs> no, no, that's, it's a good story. I mean, he, he'd organised with Dad to come up and, and watch me play, and I didn't know anything about it. And my mate ran into the rooms and, and said he was he was there watching, and uh, um, I was only playing in the, in the forward pocket that day, and uh, Curls was, was pretty annoyed. My dad had saved the car park for him, and... He'd rocked up with an esky full of beer to watch the footy <laughs> with my old man, and uh, uh, he wasn't happy I was playing in the forward pocket. But uh, there's a postscript of that though. You had a fair day in the forward pocket, didn't you? I think I kicked ten. <laughs> and, uh, he signed me up. Now you've had a really interesting array of coaches. I mean, Curls at West Adelaide. Yeah. Graham Corns. Yeah. Uh, Robert Shaw. Yeah. Malcolm Blight, Gary Ayres, and Neil Craig. Yeah. It's, there's a broad spectrum there, isn't there? Uh, absolutely, and I think um, yeah, I've learned a lot out of all of those coaches, good and bad, and um, yeah, and that's important. I think if uh, if you were to go into coaching, having the experience from a number of different coaches gives me, uh, I think, a pretty broad knowledge of uh, of what not to do and what to do. So uh, you know, they're all had their good points and, and bad points, and uh, there's some very good coaches in there. You, your book clearly gives me the impression that, that Bloody's on a plane of his own. As yep. someone who, who you learnt from and who was able to inspire the team? 
Lloydie was the best actual football coach I'd ever played with in terms of teaching you how to play footy. And he had some pretty basic rules in place about behaviour and on-field structure um, and um, having a bit of fun off-field. So mm. I, I do think he was clearly the best football coach. Um, Neil Craig was also a very, very good coach. Um, probably didn't have the footy smarts as a Malcolm Blight, but uh, his professionalism, his structure... Um, how he taught us how to be better people was even better than a lot better than Blighty. Mm -hmm. Graham Corns was a good coach as well. Um, Didn't you? I thought you had some run run-ins with him. No, not really. I mean, uh, no, he was. He, I was only very young, 17, 18, while he was coaching, and. You know, we, we could have easily won the flag in 93 if yep. we'd kick straight, but we didn't. Um, but uh, he could have been a, a premiership coach of an AFL mm. club within two years. So uh, he would have been looked at pretty differently yeah, if that happened. Yeah. So uh, no, we had some very good coaches. Half time in the 98 grand final, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. North's 24 points in front. Yeah. You blokes have got your heads down. They've dominated play and they've kicked poorly. Yep. How did Bloody turn that round? Well, for the previous six weeks, it absolutely flogged us on the track. Um, we got beaten in the first week of the finals by um, Melbourne, I think it was, and um, you know played poorly. And then we, we trained really, really hard. We were super fit, and uh, he just was ultra positive. He said, "Throw it out the window. Forget about what's happened. Back your fitness in. Every time you get the ball, just play on," which was before. You know, sides were doing yeah. that. You know, you'd go back and try and find a target or kick long, but he said just play on and, and take it to them. And uh, I think Lee Matthews said in the call uh, in the third quarter, it looks like they've changed jumpers. And uh, we did run over them and, uh, and won the game. Mm. Last year you missed out, but uh, you finally got one, buddy. Yeah, I'll make up for it this year. It was just a great game today. Now, one year later, in your book, Rue, your view was that Bloody didn't even want to be at Adelaide at that point. Uh, not in well. There's rumours going around that after he, uh, they won the '97 flag, that you know he'd ticked the box of being a premiership coach. Mm. I mean, he'd, he'd missed a few chances at Geelong. In '98, he coached fantastically, um, but the rumours were he didn't necessarily want to coach in '99 either. Um, and um, you know, we had a horrible '99 for a number of different reasons. Not could you detect that? Could the playing group detect that Bloody's heart wasn't in it? No, not really. No, Bloody. Bloody didn't do anything um, silly that, to suggest that, but you know, um, once everyone had won flags and won two in a row, uh, a lot of things went wrong in '99, and, and, um, and Bloody said he would never coach again. I want to take you to that. What, what, how did you feel when you woke up and uh, and saw uh, read the news that Bloody had signed on to coach St Kilda in 2001? <laughs> well, he'd made it pretty clear he wasn't going to do it, but you know, rumours again was saying that. Uh, he got offered quite a bit of money and said no, like a million quite bucks. a bit more, and a bit yeah. said no, and then a million bucks and said, well, I'll probably have to take that. Yeah, I, I get the impression that you weren't a huge fan of your two coaches from Victoria, Robert Shaw and Gary Ayres. Uh, no, not because they were from Victoria. No. No, I got on well with uh, Ayresy um, and Shawy, really, but uh, I, I don't think Shawy's two years at Adelaide were his best couple of years uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, Sean Wren did his knee and he was our best player at the time, so that didn't get him off to a good start. But uh, I don't think he was a great head coach, uh, mm -hmm. Robert Shaw. He had some real good qualities, but um, the footy club, I think, went backwards uh, those couple of years. Did he try to turn you into an enforcer of sorts? Oh, there was a little bit of that happening at the time. I think when he came come over, he probably got some information to say they needed to toughen us up a little mm. bit. But... Uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I didn't change my game too much. I didn't go forwards in my career. In fact, it was the first time I probably went backwards, really, in performance. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't great for me, but uh, I, I hold nothing against Robert Shaw. I don't think, um, don't dislike him personally, mm. but uh, just wasn't a good couple of years for the club. Is it, is it difficult, almost impossible, for a, someone to come from Victoria or any other state, I suspect, but mainly Victoria, and go to Adelaide and be accepted? I don't think so. No? No, not at all. Um, I mean, Gary Ayres was a, a likeable bloke as well, and I played like, my best footy under Gary Ayres, so it had no effect on me. But Gary, um, as everyone would know, is a pretty tough bugger. Um, he'll just uh, um, he'll, he'll push you pretty hard, and um, he's got sort of one way he does it, and, and that's probably the old school, and it was fine by me, but he probably lost a few of the players and uh, towards the end. And uh, we had some pretty good records, uh, pretty good results under Ayresy, but... Um, you know, they probably could have been better if um, a few things were done a little bit differently. Did you seriously contemplate switching to rugby league, or is, it, is that a bit mythical? I was a bit uh, disillusioned for a while under Shorey, there's no doubt about that, but I was at that age where I was probably, you know, 
looking for everything, you know, looking at life a lot mm. differently. But um, no, I like I'd never even played rugby. I just I was that sick of what was going on there at that stage. But I wasn't the only one at the footy club that was uh, you know, a bit wayward. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, after the break, I want to ask you about that special rivalry between Adelaide and Port Adelaide on and off the footy field. <music> Two of your most decorated teammates, Andrew McLeod and Tyson Edwards, yep. had a major fallout. You were the captain. Uh, what was the origin of the issue and how did you handle it? Well, it was a bit of a sticky one, really, because um, it was over uh, an, another mate that we all knew, Leighton, uh, Leighton Hewitt. Leighton Hewitt. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, to be quite honest, we just thought it had sorted itself out pretty quickly, but it dragged on. And when we confronted it, it was, it was a bit awkward because um, they were both in the leadership group. Um, you know, the, their families were involved as well. Their, their partners or wives were involved as well. So... Uh, look, looking back on it, it would have been good for it just to sort itself out and, and both of them front up and, and sort it out, but they both just didn't want to. They were yeah. both pretty stubborn lads um, and weren't prepared to give an inch um, and um, it made it a bit awkward. On the field, they were fine. Um, off the field, they never spoke. Um, to but say you're, you're, very, you're an upfront individual. Yep. My view of you would be, you would have said, listen, you blokes, yep. we need to sort this out. Yep. You know, you don't have to love each other, but yep. we're playing in the same footy club, and it's and it's tense. Well, they did do that to a degree. Uh, on field, there wasn't a, an issue, but to say it didn't have an effect is, wouldn't be true. I mean, it, it all, always does, but uh, uh, they they still don't talk, and I don't think they ever will, which is sad. Mm. Did you side with either one of them? No, absolutely no. not. Um, but uh, they're both great lads, and both love both of them. Do you, did the, do you think the coaches and the administration of the LA Football Club handled it as well as they could? Yeah, I think they did. It was, it, was, it was a sticky one, Mike, when families are involved and if they're not prepared to budge, I mean, I don't think it was far off one of them leaving the club, to be mm. quite honest. It was really close to happening, I think, but um, that would have been a disaster as well. Um, but um, it's just one of those things that happened in the footy club, which you'd wish it didn't. You're familiar with a place called Ramsgate? <laughs> yeah. It's a hotel oh, yeah. in Adelaide somewhere, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had, one of mine, either. You had an eventful afternoon there one Sunday, didn't you? Um, back in about uh, 2002? Yeah, it was a little bit eventful for all the wrong reasons when you're captain, but... Uh, now, I, the Adelaide I'm boys not, uh, were at the at, the, at we, Ramsgate, were you, or nearby? No, we were at the, the um, Henley Square, and uh, Simon Goodwin had just had his 100th uh, game the day before against Port, and we got beaten again, and they'd beaten us quite a few times, and uh, we just went down there for lunch, and uh, lunch dragged on a bit longer than it probably should have <laughs> on a Sunday, and, um, yeah, we... Uh, some of the you know, one of the lads went over to the bottle shop at the Ramsgate to get a couple of bottles of wine and said the port boys were in there and someone thought it was a good idea to go over there. Did you uh, go looking for Josh Carr? Not in a not in a too bad sort of way, but if he was, <laughs> <laughs> aren't you the bloke that spread eagerly across the bonnet of a <laughs> no, Mercedes? No, uh, that's yeah. not true. Uh, a few things happened, but me and Carrie, good mates now. It was silly when you look back. A bit of fun, but uh, a bit of fun. It wasn't too bad. Is there a, you, he got under your skin, Josh Carr, didn't he? Absolutely did. Yeah. Yeah. At hey. that time of the game, taggers were doing things that they probably shouldn't have been allowed to do, and I didn't like it. Now, Johnny Reid was your football manager at the time, and yep. he pretended like there was a minor exchange of words. The true story is that there was a brawl, wasn't there, between like a dozen or more? I never threw a punch at Josh Carr, um, and, uh, but I certainly let him know that I wasn't happy. Um, and, but a few other guys were throwing punches and... A few blokes got hit, there's no mm. doubt about that. A few blokes were hiding under tables and <laughs> in, in, in gardens and things to get away from it as well. But uh, um, no, I was just annoyed and, you know, I'd had a few drinks and uh, it shouldn't have happened. But uh, I was a pretty passionate guy and I'd been oh. dragged, I think, for giving away a couple of free kicks against Kari and uh, he was a lot smaller than me and uh, I didn't like <laughs> losing to someone on the field. Showdowns fascinate us, yeah. those of us who don't live in South Australia. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the first showdown, uh, the build-up to that was incredible yeah. from this far, and Port Adelaide were playing their third or fourth game and they beat yeah, you, didn't they? they did, yeah. yeah. And uh, there was a huge rivalry for a long time. Um, there still is, but uh, early days it was out of control, uh, on field and off field. And uh, I mean, that's what footy's all about, isn't it? You either love or hate Port Adelaide like you do with Collingwood or mm. uh, several other sides. So. Uh, you know, it was, it was full on, it was great, uh, it was good to play in and um, 
no one like losing them. You've played with a host of champions at the Crows. I suppose the, most people's view is Rashudo and McLeod are the two best. I mean, obviously leaving yourself out. Is McLeod the best player you played with? Yeah, look, there's plenty of good players, and at different times, I mean, I can, McLeod overall with his whole record, I guess, is uh, unparalleled because of what he's done to perform on grand final days, to perform over 340 games, mm. um, to play back, forward, and midfield. Um, you know, his, his skills were. Sensational. Jeez, you mightn't be the most decorated player in Adelaide. No, I told you got that wrong. I told you that before. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, he. I mean, he's special. Um, so no, he's number one. He's up there. Um, you know, Darren Jarman for what he did on the grand finals and what he did on his best days were, you know, uh, unbelievable. You know, he's, some people would say he's the best player to watch. Tony Modra, I think, was the, the most exciting ever. Um, he's not 1993 when he kicked 129 goals. His highlight reel would be better than anyone's. Yeah. Where is he? Hey, he's living on a farm down uh, south of Adelaide and uh, doing really well for himself. Yeah. He's, uh, he's uh, done all right uh, money-wise. He's got a farm. He, uh, he moves a few cattle around for a few farmers uh, down around his area. He's had a couple of kids. He's just had a young boy, mm -hmm. which has been fantastic. Father's son, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Um, he's got a little girl as well. So, no, he's doing very well for himself. Uh, it's Mods. interesting with Mods. He didn't play in either of the premiership teams, did he? No, that was... He was, was injured a, with you the first one? That was a, you know, a, a very unfortunate... Um, part of history of the Adelaide Football Club so uh, he was injured in 97 mm -hmm. and um, in 98 Blighty dropped him and uh, how, late, how late in the year was that? In the finals <laughs> yeah it was pretty tough um, and uh, the fact that actually Mods left and went to Freo was even tougher again I mean mm. as I said most exciting player in Adelaide's history and yep. he thrilled the crowd more than anyone Mark there's a moving account in your book Rue about you losing two of your mates you were in your mid-twenties Matt and Joe both died in different sets of circumstances yep. at about 30 years of age. That must be very difficult for someone so young. Yeah, it was when they were your best mates, your very best mates, and uh, one was a cousin, so it uh, had a big impact on my life, that's for sure. I guess uh, that's why I uh, enjoy uh, the successes whenever they arise. I was really moved by uh, your story about, about Matt. You'd had a falling out with him. Yep. Yet when he died, you were moved to write a note to him. Uh, and put it in his hand in the coffin. That must have been an extremely <laughs> difficult thing to do. Yep, it was. Um, yeah, he died really quickly, and um, it was unfortunate. And uh, like this, when you see uh, the mothers uh, bury their sons, it's not a good mm. thing. But um, we got everything that went wrong. You know, was forgiven straight away. But um, you know, we, he's uh, he's still a great mate, I guess. Must have weighed heavily on you though, to to be moved to actually sort of because you'd, you'd had this falling out and hadn't, hadn't f patched it up before yeah. he died. Oh, uh, yeah, look, honestly, I patched it up pretty quickly and uh, we moved on. But, uh, yeah, when you lose mates at that age, it's, uh, you know, until you, I guess, experience it, you, you don't know what it's like. But uh, to have that happen and then have it happen three years later was mm. uh, pretty tough. I and mean, then that happened uh, in a week leading into a, a f the first final and I was captain, so... Uh, I had to put on a pretty brave face that day. How, how do you keep your focus? Well, you, I know your your you responsibility just, is to be the footy club, I understand yeah. that, but you've got this huge emotional trauma in your life. Uh, how do you sort of keep them in balance? You just block it out. Um, you just block it out until you get the job done. And um, the day that Matt died, I did a triathlon straight after um, seeing him dead on the, on the front porch. And uh, then I broke down in the, in the toilets after the triathlon mm. and... Uh, when Joe died, I, you know, you just steal yourself until after you, you play the game, which we won against West Coast Eagles, and then uh, same thing happened in the toilets. Up, you know, you just go mm -hmm. and hide and do what you got to do. So, um, yeah, they were tougher, tough events, and um, you know, uh, when they make that, you grow up in a hurry, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah, you you, you pretty much realise what's important in your life after mm -hmm. that. Brownlow, you were involved in the first triple dead heat we've had in the Brownlow with Nathan Buckley and Adam Goods. Yep. Does that make it more special or less special because it's, you're one of three? More for me. Uh, probably some people would see it as a negative, but I always like doing things with other people. So uh, and not too bad of blokes to share it with. <laughs> no. I like to play a little bit. So, uh, yeah, Buckley and Goods. So, no, we've got a little connection, I think. And, uh, no, I think it was a great night. There was, uh, you know, some great stories about people watching it that night and yeah. afterwards. So, uh, no, it was... Uh, Fairy tale, really. I think well, there was some great symmetry last year at the AFL Hall of Fame. The three joint Brownlow medalists yep. going in together. That must have been a big thrill for you. 
Yeah, look, um, yeah, the Hall of Fame was a good night, and uh, you know, Buckley and uh, Heard and Vossi, um, you know, it was uh, you know, a good quartet, I guess, to be involved with in, and um, you know, it's very special to be in the Hall of Fame. But life's good, isn't it? I mean, you enjoy your footy career's been great. You're enjoying your yep. life. It's a, it's a bowl of cherries, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I work very hard, and I think I'd like to think I've earned most things I've got. So, but I think. Uh, you know, a lesson for everyone is to enjoy successes. That was what made Blighty a good coach. Um, if we if we'd had a good win, he'd say go out and have some fun. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I always do that. I'm not hiding away from that. I think it's an important trait to mm. to have fun whenever you can. Mark, we've been lucky to watch you play. It's been a great career. There's no doubt about that. You've always been a good bloke. Congratulations on that, and good luck for the future. Thanks, Mike. This has been a Fox Footy production.